how soon do you think it could be before we see a robot vacuum, which could do multiple floors on its own? You know, I always say that to our engineers um, and I give them that challenge. So I'm here to geek out over some smart home robotics with EcoVac CEO, David Chang. David, it's a pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. So there's a lot of great tech innovations that we're seeing here at CES 2024. A lot of it has to do with AI. We're seeing a lot of innovations with interesting products, I'd say. I know that can be, you know, like a buzzword, AI throwing all of that in there, but truly when it comes to like innovative tech that I think is practical, that households, people like you and me might actually use today and in the next few years, it comes from household brands like Ecovax. So I just want to kind of pick your brain, learn about like the development of your technologies and maybe even find out what we're going to see in the next five to 10 years from you guys. Sure. So, you know, I, I always feel like we come from the robotics angle, uh, whether it's in the robotic vacuums we do or robotic lawnmowers that we do. Um, I feel like we are bringing technology into perhaps a very traditional product back then, for example, a vacuum or a lawnmower. And it's our mission uh, through our technology, whether in motors, in control systems, in sensors and softwares and AI, I think uh, Ecovax is definitely one of the, the first brands to put AI in, in robotic vacuums, one of the first brands to put AI in robotic lawnmowers. And the idea is to, to empower these products that maybe in the past are, are more mundane and needs our involvement yes. right, to free up people's time. Uh, we always say it's if we have done our job well, if, if we take the product out of people's hands and, and let the product do its work. So I know for me, I've been reviewing robot vacuums for a while and like you said, a lot of the early models, they were more of like, it felt more of like a concept. Like it, it didn't feel finalized, like you would have to focus on the vet. You would have to like follow it around, make sure it didn't get caught in anything, right. fall downstairs. They've definitely come a long way. So you're talking about how you guys are kind of like the industry leader now with regards to AI and robotics with regards to our household items. So a robotic system is very complicated, right? It, it involves all the hardware, software, uh, critical sensors. And, and I think what we do that's correctly and different than the others is we're extremely vertically integrated. So we design um, our own products, we manufacture our own products, uh, but apart from that, we also design and manufacture key components. So we have our own battery factory, we have our own motor factory, we design and build our own sensors. And the idea of that is to make sure that we can, when we put all of them together, they fit extremely well. And they fit extremely well based on a product concept and design that we have that we feel like can solve people's uh, issues at home. So for example, on the, the, the new Dbot X2, uh, it's in a completely different form factor than what you see in a traditional uh, robotic vacuum. And it, it's, it's square shaped. And it has an embedded LiDAR that, that we have designed, a semi-solid state LiDAR that we have designed. Uh, that is not an off-the-shelf LiDAR that you see uh, from any other uh, brand's uh, proposition. I think it's fair to say, like, I am probably one of the youngest people who is as obsessed with robot vacuums. And I can't really explain why, but the thing I like about it is it's something I use almost every day. And especially with you guys, I'm actually seeing the development. Like, I, I'm talking with your development team. And in the next few years, I'm actually seeing a lot of those ideas that we're discussing coming into future releases. So with, I believe it was the T20 Omni, when you had the, the raising mop pads. Yes. So that was a game changer for yes. me because one of the things that I really wanted was something that in one swoop, in one cleaning cycle, could not only clean my carpets, but could also do my hardwood floors, as opposed to having to take them off and then having to have it do another cleaning cycle. That doesn't feel very automated. Right. So that was a huge change. So Dan, can you give us like a quick rundown of how we're seeing AI in the actual lineup for this year? Yeah, Paul, so we've taken AI and, and other learnings as well from our robotic vacuum lines and applied them to all the robotics inside and outside of the home. So we've got great AI in our Dbot line that's helping it determine uh, object avoidance, mapping and navigation, um, runtime for battery and, and uh, scheduling. And it's all really built in um, to our new Dbot X2 combo, um, a new iteration of the Dbot X2 Omni. And then in some of our other new products like Goat GX 600, our awesome first- Awesome name. Yeah, thank you. The greatest of all time. Our first ever US robotic lawnmower 
Uh, we're using AI and, and other borrowed features from our, our flagship devices on the robotic vacuum and mop side uh, to help the lawnmower uh, find its way, but also go back to charge when it needs to and pick up where it left off so it doesn't repeat tasks or repeat uh, mowing. So again, simplifying the process, that way there's more hands off from the user and more smartness from the product. Getting rid of the human as much as humanly possible. Our new WinBot here uses suction power on both the device itself to pay, stay pretty tight to the window, but also on the new station. You see there's only give on the sides, but in the center, it's suctioning as well. So on the off chance that a bird or something hits this on the outside and it takes a tumble, not only is there the tether that keeps it attached, but the station itself will stay very grounded to its surface and catch the device as another safety measure that we've included in Wimbot. So I know this is a very popular category lineup overseas right now. We haven't really seen it make its way to the US yet. What do you think is kind of the obstacle with that right now? And what are we doing to kind of like make this a practical product for US users? This is the prime product for show, not tell. When people see this, I'm telling you, it's been two days now at the show, plus some other events. When people see this in action, WinBot in action, they're like, okay, now I get it. I hate cleaning the windows, and that's why I never actually do it, or I have someone else do it and pay someone else to do it. But if I can spend just a few hundred dollars, this thing's gonna be around $400 when it comes to market here in the next few months. For 400 or give or take dollars, having a window cleaning robot that you can pick up from one window to the next and doing it in a safe and effective and efficient way, um, it's a pretty good sell. So right away, I can tell that this is actually a relatively compact system. You have like an all-in-one setup right here and it has a battery built in, right? So you don't even need to plug in anymore. That's Sorry. the newest innovation we've had with WinBot. So you just stick it onto your window, press go. It's suctioning now and it's gonna start its process. It can untether automatically as it needs to. Really? Close this back up. Oh. And like I said, there's, you see the spray there. It's gonna go do its thing. What's really great is that not only is it suctioning on the device, like I mentioned before, it's suctioning on the station as well. We're also seeing some mapping happening here as well. Yeah, so it maps in real time uh, based off of the window. This is the cleanest damn window in all of Las Vegas. Can you speak to maybe the next couple of years what maybe new technologies we'll see that will also take cleaning to the next level? I think looking ahead into the horizon, you will see that more EcoVax products are gonna come out um, with much, much more intelligence yes. to help it understand the entire home area and, and so that it can navigate uh, and clean really, really well. Taking that even a few stages further, we talked about stairs a little bit. Yes. I still have to use the, <laughs> the, the handheld. Yeah. How soon do you think it could be before we see a robot vacuum, which could do multiple floors on its own? You know, I always say that to our engineers um, and I give them that challenge. I said, we need to fix this. We need to become the number one brand that, that can do this. Give us some time. It's, yes. it's in the labs. Yes. We're cooking on it. <laughs> because right now, obviously, we have to have one for each floor yeah. that or we actually move the robot and then have a different map that it then switches yeah. over to. I'm telling you, this is <laughs> this is something I'm so excited yeah, for. Yeah, so am I. I'm really looking forward to one day launch our product at CES. So actually we internally our understanding of the intelligence of, of the, the robot goes like this. And I, I say it's the three S space, setting, and service. So space meaning that through LiDAR and and you know, we have a full mapping of, of your home, right? And, and that helps navigation. Um, setting meaning through AI, it understands, you know, through um, object identification, it understands the different um, context of a certain environment, right? So then it understands this is a living room, this is a bedroom, this is my kitchen. And the ser service of it is, understanding the, the context of setting that it knows um, how to cater to the user differently. So for example, if you are watching a movie in your living room, the robot should understand that. Maybe this is a quiet time. Through AI, this is quiet time. I should move away. Yes. You know, I should not interrupt the user that, that's here and, and enjoying his time or her time. Um, or in the kitchen, right? After cleaning, this is where I should come in. Right, and, and really do a thorough clean on the floor. And also through, we have an embedded uh, voice assistant 
Okay, you go. Okay, Eco. Uh, that's also try to help the user uh, to do much simpler controls and interactions with the robot. It, it feels a lot more natural at that point exactly. because one, we don't have to pull out the app and then you know manually bring it exactly. over there or say, okay, clean the kitchen. No, there's a specific spot right here exactly. where I'm standing. It'll notice. Yeah, I just made a mess here. Yes. Come here and clean. Do it simply. Okay. Return back exactly. to the dock. So, so I think AI is, is such a core component of how we feel uh, that we're always investing. The software side, hardware side, at the end of the day is how do we provide and let the users know that, you know, if a product has AI in it, uh, it gives them the complete different experience. Well, that's been a great interview. I really appreciate your time today, David. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you.